Alright guys, BLM here back with a new video. In this video, I'm going to be doing another Jeff Probst prediction video. This time talking about who I think is his least favorite player from each season. So obviously through this video, we'll be going through every season from Survivor Borneo to Winners at War. And talking about who his least favorite player is from each of them. Now, I will try to be keeping these to in-game reasons, or at least reasons that are at the time of the airing of the show. Obviously, there are notable figures that have controversy surrounding them after the show, namely someone like a Michael Scoopin, that I think if you were to ask him, obviously would probably be his least favorite person from certain seasons. But because that happened after the show, I will not be including that as part of the predictions here. This will be mostly around how I think he thought at the time of around this season was taking place. So that said, let's just get, run right into it. Let's just start off with Survivor Borneo. And to be honest, I don't really have a great response for Borneo. Now, we did see him being kind of annoyed at the Tagi Alliance at points, with them blatantly lying to him throughout the season. We saw him being kind of annoyed with like Richard Hatch when he dropped out of that final immunity challenge. We know that he was kind of annoyed at Pagong when Pagong supposedly tried to vote him out at the first tribal. Like all those things I could see him not liking certain people for, but I feel like for me the answer here is Stacy Stillman, the person who ended up suing the show claiming that it was rigged. I think that's probably the answer here. Even if we're going beyond the element of her suing the show, I mean, I think it's pretty clear that production just didn't really like her that much, even before that moment. Now, again, this doesn't really feel like a very personalized reason to Jeff, and I do feel like this is probably one of the picks on the list here that seems to be very much influenced by things that happened after the filming of the show, which, again, most of these picks will be contained within the filming of the show but I don't feel like there's any great individual other option especially considering how I do feel like Jeff has an appreciation for someone like a Richard Hatch due to the entertainment he brought to the show so because I do feel like Stacey Stillman is probably the actual pick here next up we have the Australian Outback and kind of the same thing goes here again I feel like this is kind of before Jeff would openly have opinions on certain players outside of his love for Colby here. I mean, again, in terms of people he disliked, like I do feel like there are points where he would call out like Jerry, call out a scoopin. However, I don't feel like he actually disliked those people as figures on this show. Obviously, Varner's a controversial figure now, but like not on the Australian Outback. So for me, it really came down to two of the earlier boots that I feel like probably brought very little to the show in his eyes people that i could see him being kind of annoyed at while talking to at tribal and that would come down to kel or mitchell and i decided to go with mitchell just because again kel at least had beef jerky gate while mitchell someone that did stay around a bit longer but also was someone that was sick the entire time i would guess that jeff would think that again he brought pretty much nothing to the show and because I feel like Mitchell is the person that comes to my mind as Jeff Probst's least favorite from this season, mainly because I don't feel like there's any really great option. Now for Survivor Africa and here, I mean, I think this one's kind of apparent to me. I mean, first up, I think the only people he really showed any real annoyance with on the season were the young Samburu members, where when they were voting out the older players, he was very upset at them at Tribal, pretty much openly saying that their strategy makes no sense. So because that, I think it obviously narrowed down to those four Samburu members. Beyond that, I think most people getting the blame for the moves that they were making were Silas and Lindsay. So I think Kim Powers and Brandon kind of escaped that here. And now between those two, while again, Silas is definitely a more controversial figure nowadays, I do feel like the correct answer here is Lindsay. It does seem like Jeff was annoyed at Lindsay at certain points. You even see at the tribal where she goes home. After the first vote, as if she's going home, like Jeff's annoyed and tells her to sit down. It's like, I think that's enough proof for me to where I do think he was pretty annoyed with her out there. And she is my pick for Africa. Now for Marquesas, I do feel like we have two real options here. I mean, like we can also consider Zoe because like I doubt Jeff Probst liked Zoe. But I don't really have any massive proof for that. I think the two options here are the final two in Nalia and Vesepia. Where I feel like both of them are people that just weren't giving Jeff what he wanted at Tribal. I mean, this is a pretty well-known thing at this point that supposedly they reshot Final Tribal 
because of how boring the producers found that final tribal. I mean, again, like for me, I feel like these are the clear bottom two. And like considering how Jeff has talked about Vesepia postseason, I feel like the clear pick here for me is Vesepia. I mean, Jeff never seemed to like Vesepia. Even now, in interviews about winners, he talked about how he didn't think that there was going to be an all-winner season before Winners at War because there weren't interesting old school winners, which I, I think he was very clearly talking about Vesepia at that point. I think for me, Vesepia is the clear pick here. Now for Survivor, Thailand. And again, I think for Thailand here, for me, it's clearly between the top two of the season as well. I think it's between Brian Heideck and Clay. Now, I do think you could consider some of the Sukjai members, probably like a Rob and a Jed, like some of these people during the attack zone challenge that you could tell he was annoyed by. But again, I don't think they're to any real extreme. I do think it's between Brian and Clay. And Clay, someone who he calls out at points and also got annoyed at during the like bye bye Denver Diva moment. But for me, I mean, I think the answer here is Brian Heideck. I mean, Jeff has talked about how he was too repulsed to have him back for Heroes versus Villains. Talks about how he's a genuinely terrible human being. Like, I mean, I think Brian Heideck is clearly the answer here. Also, someone that supposedly production did not know the full background behind him coming into season with him having done like softcore porn. You also have the puppy situation, which happened not too long after season. Like, I feel like there's just so many reasons why Jeff would hate Brian Heideck. So that's why he's clearly the pick here. Now for the Amazon, and I will say for the Amazon, I have no real pick here i don't think there is a solid answer here like there's no clear front runner like there is with most seasons like there's someone like a heidi who you could tell he was annoyed by at points and definitely called out at points but i, I think that was something he was having fun with like i think that was more so like him thinking that she made great tv you have like some earlier boots like a janet a joanna a gene who didn't really bring much to the season but i don't see any reason why he would like actively dislike them either so really for me i end up going with shauna mainly because shauna wanted to quit the game and this is a point in survivor where jeff was very anti-quitters that's the only reason she's at the bottom here. I have no real other explanation here because, again, I don't think there is a solid answer for the Amazon. I don't think it's a cast that he dislikes anyone in particular. So I think because Shauna wanted to quit, I feel like that's the answer that I'm going to go with, even though, again, realistically, it's probably just another option that doesn't really matter. Now, for the Pearl Islands, I mean, we have two clear front runners here from the Pearl Islands. I mean, we have Austin, the original quitter of the game, and we have Johnny Fairplay, Someone that he's very openly disliked outside of the game. However, again, due to my criteria of it being based around at the time of the season itself, I feel like the answer here is Austin. I feel like fair play at this point, like while he was annoyed with fair play at points, I, I think there is a respect for fair play due to how great a TV he is. However, I feel like with Austin, he just straight up dislikes Austin and straight up wanted to make an example of him for quitting the game. Despite, again, like, I, I personally think his quit was warranted. Obviously, Propes doesn't see it that way. And I feel like Propes would very clearly say Austin is the pick here. Next up for the All-Stars. And All-Star seasons are obviously very weird because like most All-Star seasons are obviously filled with people that are worthy returnees. And through that, people that you would assume that Jeff likes to a degree. And I do think this season is an example where like I don't think there's a solid pick for this season. Now, I did narrow it down to three. I did consider Sue Hawk, obviously, because Sue yelled at Jeff. Now, obviously, it was a very warranted situation for Sue to be very upset at that point. But I know that Jeff has talked about how that moment has like traumatized him. And I do feel like that is a reason why he would possibly say Sue. I also consider Rob Sesternino in the fact that he has talked about how disappointed he was with Rob on All Stars. But for me, I'm going to go with the person who I think he just has no real connection with even before the season, even after the season. And that person is Jenna Lewis. Now, again, like I don't think this, there's a solid answer for this season. This is a very just gut reaction sort of thing, but one Jenna is one of the more like questionable picks to be on all stars to begin with. Plus also, she is one of these people that did lead this anti winner sentiment. And you could tell he was very annoyed at that sentiment during tribals. So I think that's another reason to pick on Jenna Lewis here. It's like, I feel like Jenna Lewis seems like the pick for me here. Now for Vanuatu, where for me, there's a very clear pick. Now, obviously there are a lot of like of the forgettable men, people like a Brooke, people like a John 
Polyak, you have John Kenny, you have a Brady. It's like, I'm sure Jeff isn't like a massive fan of any of those guys. But for me, I mean, like the clear pick here is Chris, especially at the time of the season. Again, obviously Jeff was really into Julie at that point. They started dating. You could definitely tell he was annoyed at how much Chris kind of snowed Julie. There's constant shots of Chris talking at Final Tribal, and then they would just cut to Jeff, who looks like really annoyed the entire time. We have the reunion show where it's very clear there that Jeff is annoyed at Chris and is talking about why Twyla should have won the game. Like, I think Chris is the pretty clear answer in my eyes for Vanuatu here. Next up for Palau. And this is another season where I don't feel like there is a solid answer. Again, I think the initial thought is Janu, again, someone that quit the game. The problem is that Jeff wanted her to quit the game to save Stephanie. And Janu is even in consideration for Micronesia. So that makes me think that's probably not Janu. So if we're going beyond that, there just aren't that many people that I have like actual proof of anything Jeff would be annoyed at. I mean, maybe some of the early boots on Oolong, but it's like, again, no real proof of that. So the person I ended up going with is Wanda. Because first up, who isn't annoyed by Wanda? Second thing it is funny at the reunion show where like Wanda is trying to sing her song and Jeff tries to cut her off and all that. So it's like, that's enough proof for me. Again, like there isn't a solid answer here. I don't think this is a cast that he actively disliked in any way. But for me, Wanda is the person that stood out to me. Next up for Survivor Guatemala, we have a couple options here. I, I think the obvious person that I think a lot of people will bring up is Judd. Now, Judd is someone that did get into arguments with Jeff at Tribal. He's someone that the producers very openly did not enjoy handling while out there. But I do feel like for Jeff, there is a level of respect for Judd in terms of the great TV that Judd brought to the show. Like, I mean, like you can see, like Jeff is laughing at points where Judd is arguing with him. And I think that alone makes him not the pick here. I do think Brian Corden is someone that Jeff did not particularly like at the time. I do think he came off as this like kind of arrogant know-it-all in the preseason. I think that's something that Jeff didn't like. But for me, I mean, the real answer here is Lydia. I mean, Lydia is someone that, again, like Jeff talks about, like he doesn't understand how Lydia even made it that far. Lydia just seems like the type of personality that Jeff would have no respect for, especially at this point in Survivor history. For me, I, I feel like Lydia was the very clear pick here. Next up, we're moving on to Survivor Panama, where we have a couple options here. I mean, first off, it's like, I did consider Nick, mainly because Nick is boring, and I mean, how could anyone like Nick that much? But I think the realistic options moving forward are probably someone like a Shane Powers, obviously someone that has been very anti-Jeff in a lot of his interviews post-show. But again, I, I like Judd, I think there is a level of respect for Shane that Jeff has that makes him not the bottom pick. And through that, we're essentially knocked down to the final two once again, where there are some rumors out there that Jeff really doesn't like Daniel DeLorenzo, which I don't fully get. Like, I can definitely see him being annoyed with her at points on the season, but I don't think he's, like, actively, like, really hating Daniel DeLorenzo. So for me, I decided to go with Aris. I mean, Aris is someone that he has talked about in interviews as being the most boring winner in the history of the show. He's someone that did come back for Blood vs. War, but I feel like he only came back for Blood vs. War because they really liked Vetus. And even after that season, like, we haven't really heard Jeff talk that positively about Aris. Like, I feel like his general thought on Aris is, Again, not very positive. So because I did go with Aris for Panama, for Cook Islands, we have a decent amount of contenders here. I mean, we do have people like a Penner who we did get into arguments with. But again, I think it's a similar case to like a Shane or a Judd. Probably even less of a case in the sense I think he genuinely likes Penner. We have people like a Sandra and a Becky, people he was annoyed by. The penultimate tribal where to get into the fire making challenge. Both of them didn't know how to make it. We also have some surprising amount of negative content from him about Yule, where there's a lot of times in the game where he would try to just blow up Yule's spot at Tribal, which was very bizarre to me. But again, I think there's a level of respect for Yule from a gameplay standpoint that makes him not the bottom. So because of that, I decided to go with two people that he talked very negatively about in the preseason, with those people being Cecilia and Adam. And realistically here, I'm going to go with Adam, largely because Adam, one Adam was on the season for longer, but also, I mean, like, I feel like there's definitely points where you can see Jeff taking shots at Adam, particularly the moment where Candace gets voted out. And really, I, I don't think Jeff ever saw anything positive in Adam. So because I did put him here for Cook Islands, 
For Fiji, we have a few contenders here as well. We do have someone like an Anthony. Someone that I, I find it weird that Jeff never seemed to like Anthony. It was very really weird where like where we have the Anthony Rocky arguing and Jeff really seems to side with Rocky during all that, which I don't think has particularly aged well. We also have Jeff calling Earl a really boring winner around the time of Heroes vs. Villains, which again, I don't think is a great sign for him. But for me, I mean, the clear answer here is Lisi. I mean, like, how could the answer not be Lisi? Like, he just seemed to openly despise her throughout a lot of the season, especially at the point where, she, like, she was hoping that she would be eliminated at the point that she wasn't picked for a tribe. Like, there's a lot of reasons to not like Lisi, and I feel like Jeff Probst very openly didn't. Next up for Survivor, China. I don't think there's a particularly great answer here, if I'm being honest, where, like, I do have some contenders here. I mean, obviously we have someone like a Courtney who he made some not great comments about throughout the show. But at the same time, again, I think there's a level of respect for Courtney from a TV standpoint. You have someone like a Jamie or a PG, both of them who like threw the challenge to try to get rid of Aaron James. I think he really didn't like that. And realistically, probably Jamie would be the answer here. But even though like, again, like I don't think it's a great answer because I don't think he dislikes Jamie. But I decided to go with Denise. I think the main thing that stands out here is the entire reunion fiasco that comes to mind, which again, like, I don't know how annoyed Jeff was at that, but still, it's like, it seems like something that he wouldn't love. And we also have the fact that she didn't flip at the final six, which is a situation that she could have, which I feel like Jeff would be annoyed at. So, I mean, like, I went with Denise. I don't think there's a really solid answer here, though. I do think it could really be anybody now for micronesia i feel like there's a couple options here i mean i think you have someone like a mary who didn't really bring anything to the show i feel like he could be annoyed at her for that you have a joel who i think jeff just very openly like never particularly liked and i think just in general most people from the season didn't seem to like joel then you also have chet who again jeff pretty openly didn't like but i think the clear answer here is fair play again like Fair play wasn't the pick at Pearl Islands because again, I think there was a level of respect there by that point. By the time of Micronesia, I don't think there's any respect left. I, I think he just outright doesn't like fair play by this point, especially at the point where he quits the game. We obviously have that situation at the Vanuatu reunion. I, I just think there was no love loss at this point. So fair play is the pick here. Now for a Gabon, again, a few contenders. I think someone like a Kelly was someone that he never particularly seemed to like. I think Randy is one of these people that he probably has enough respect for that he wouldn't be the pick. I know Corinne is someone that he ended up blocking on Twitter at a point. But again, like I feel like this is way before that. So I don't think she's the pick. Bob is someone that he was very openly annoyed with at Tribals for not answering his questions. But I do think there is this element of Bob being the oldest winner that Jeff Probst seems to like to prop up. So I think the answer here is Susie. I think Susie seems to be the person that, again, kind of like a Lydia where Jeff is like, how'd you even get here? Like, how'd you almost win? And it's like, he very openly talks about that during the reunion show. It also just seemed like he was kind of annoyed with Susie at points on the season. Like it just seemed like he never particularly liked her. So because that she is my pick for Gabon now from token chains and I will say I don't have a good pick for token chains. I don't think there is a good pick for token chains. Now, if we're looking at the course of the season, I mean, like obviously coach is a potential pick here, but see, again, he loves coach. Like even though he calls coach out for his hypocrisy at points, like he loves coach. And the same thing goes for Steven. Like Steven is someone that he would call out during tribal, try to make him look bad at points. But I think at the end of the day, he does really like Steven as a player. So because of that, I decided, okay, let's just go with an early boot someone that isn't super memorable and I decided to go back and look at his cast assessment that he did for token chains and most of the early boots he was actually pretty high on with the exception of Candace so I decided to go with Candace here again no real reason outside the fact that he did seem to be pretty low on her in the preseason as well while we have other people like a Jerry he seemed to really like he seemed to really like Carolina he seemed to like Spencer he seemed to like Joe he seemed to like Sydney which, again, at that point, like, who else am I left with? I felt like Candace was the only person I could pick here. Next up for Samoa, I feel like there are a few options here. I mean, obviously, Natalie, the winner of the season, is someone that he never particularly liked. But I don't think it's on the level of actual, like, hatred. Like, it might be with another other player that we will talk about. I do think his opinion on Russell sours over time. But obviously, during the time of Samoa, he really liked him. Mick is someone that I don't think he particularly liked at any point, but again, not 
to absolute disdain as someone else. Last contender we have here is Fincher, who, again, he called him a poser in the preseason. But again, not enough to override Ben Browning. Uh, I think Ben is the pick here, very clearly. Openly disliked him on the season. Again, also adding in the racial undertones of everything Ben was doing. And then him, like, tripping Russell Swan, having to be kicked out of a challenge. Like, I, I just feel like Jeff clearly didn't like Ben Browning while out there. He is the pick here. Now for heroes versus villains. And again, like All-Stars, very tough to pick someone here. I think there's a decent amount of people that are kind of on the same level. So again, as contenders, again, we have Randy. I think someone that, again, talked pretty bad about Jeff after the season. But I don't know how he felt about him immediately post the season. So I decided to not make him the pick here. Courtney, again, seemed to get annoyed at a certain situation. Like the point where like he berates Courtney for voting out Boston Rob when she didn't vote out Boston Rob. I felt like that was funny, but didn't pick her. Amanda is someone that Jeff like very openly talks about how bad she is at Final Tribal over the course of the season, which is funny. But again, not enough to pick her. We also again have those rumors of him hating Danielle De Lorenzo, which is why I considered her here, but not enough. Russell again considered him, but again, I feel like at this point he was still relatively high on Russell. So the pick here for me is Colby. Mainly because, again, he seemed to be very disappointed with Colby over the course of the season. We obviously have that moment where Colby wants to turn away the chocolate and Jeff just gets really annoyed at him. I feel like for the most part, Jeff just comes out of the season very disappointed by Colby. And I feel like he's probably the pick here. Now for Survivor Nicaragua, where, I again, I feel like there's a couple contenders. I think Sash is someone that he never really liked. I think you can clearly tell that. But, again, never goes down the full hatred, which is with a certain other person. Uh, obviously, he doesn't like the quitters. He doesn't like Kelly or Nayanka. But again, I think Nayanka, there's a level of respect there for her being a great character. Kelly would probably be the better option, but he absolutely hates a certain player from the season, and that person is Shannon. Now, Shannon, I believe Jeff Probst has openly talked about being the only person he's ever had the block on social media at the time of Survivor Philippines. They obviously seem very annoyed with him at the reunion show. I mean, from what I understand, there just is a pretty hostile relationship between the two. So for me, I felt like that was the pretty clear pick there. Now for Redemption Island, and this might be a bit of a bizarre pick. Now, I, I think the initial thought is, okay, it's going to be one of the Zapatera people because obviously he was very annoyed at Zapatera for voting out Russell. However, I'm actually going to go with Russell for Redemption Island here. Mainly because if you don't know what happened during the time of Redemption Island, like immediately after Redemption Island finished filming and before it aired, there was this situation where there was a spoiler out there that had very accurate information about Samoa, Heroes vs. Villains, and they claimed to have information about Redemption Island. Yeah, I wonder who's on all those seasons. Obviously, it turned out that his source was Russell Hance. Which led to Russell Hans getting in trouble with production. And I think by this point, Jeff was just kind of annoyed by Russell. I mean, like, not too long after this season, he goes and talks about how Russell is his most hated player of all time because he thinks he's a despicable human being. Now, again, I do think there is still that level of respect there for Russell as a TV figure. But I do feel like on Redemption Island itself, I do feel like the level of hostility there was there between Russell and Survivor Production was probably enough to have Russell as the pick here. Now for Survivor South Pacific, we do have a few people. Semhar is someone that he never seemed to be particularly high on, even in the preseason, but didn't pick her. Albert, same thing, never seemed to be particularly high on him. Obviously never seemed to be too high on Sophie at the time for a win either, but for me, the clear pick here is Rick, someone that he has openly talked about in interviews as someone that was a dud on the season, someone that he would stop going to at Tribal because Rick would never answer any of his questions properly. I think Jeff just clearly did not like Rick, so he is the pick here. Now for One World, we have a few people as well. I think we have someone like Alif, who I think, again, another one of these figures kind of similar to Rick, where like just wouldn't give him anything while out there. You have someone like Alicia, who you could tell he got kind of annoyed with that point. Christina, I'm sure he didn't like her giving up at the end of the game, but the person I ended up going with was Colton. Now, this is kind of a weird one on One World here, because like obviously like now we know he hates Colton, but on One World, there, this was actually a point where like Colton was someone that production did seem to like in terms of wanting to bring him back. 
Supposedly he was going to be back for Philippines until the reception to him was so negative that they decided to swap him out for Penner, only for them to obviously end up bringing him back for Blood versus Water. So again, like I don't think he was the most hated figure here. However, I do feel like if you were to ask Propes, who his least favorite player here is, I do feel like he would say Colton, because I, I do feel like there's a difference between someone like a coach or someone like a Penner or someone like a Shane or a Judd. Like none of those people ever did anything racially motivated or anything that bad in the grand scheme of things. Well, I do feel like Colton obviously does get to that level to where I feel like there's very little you can actually say to truly support him there. Now for Survivor Philippines, where again, like not going to include Scoopin, though he would obviously be the pick now, I feel like. But here there's a few people. I mean, I know he said that Carter ended up being a dud, but again, I think there's still some level of him that does kind of like Carter, especially because he liked him in the preseason. Pete is someone that he always called like a dark horse and never really seemed to particularly like Pete. Dawson is obviously Dawson, and I'm sure he was kind of annoyed at her kissing him at the reunion show. You have someone like an Angie who he seemed to be annoyed with at Tribals, but I think the answer here is Katie. And Katie is someone that he just seemed to take every opportunity to bash on her during challenges. He seemed to not particularly like her during Tribals. She even ends up calling him out for that. I mean, like, I think Katie's probably the answer here. Next up for Karamoan. Here we do have a couple options, but I think there's one very clear option. I mean, Corinne is someone, again, that he ended up blocking after the season, but no real in-game reason for it. Reynold is someone that he never particularly seemed to like, but I do think the clear answer here has to be Brandon Hance. Obviously, I, I think Jeff obviously knew it was a mistake to have Brandon on the season by the time he ends up going home there. Obviously, he's not at the reunion show. I feel like the clear answer here has to be Brandon. Next up for Blood versus Water, and again, this is another situation where, again, Couple contenders, but one very clear one. I mean, Laura B, he seemed to never like, seemed to be annoyed with her not answering his questions. VS, he liked at the time, though, again, we'll talk about him possibly later. But for, I mean, the answer here is Colton. I mean, again, obviously he hates Colton at this point. Obviously upset that he quits, calls him a two time quitter. Like, I mean, it's the clear answer here. Next up, we're at Kagion, which I think Kagion here, I think, is a tough one. To really gauge i will say from kagi on on i do feel like it is a lot tougher to get jeff's real opinions on players maybe with like one or two exceptions as i do feel like from this point on like he is so drenched in the executive producer mode where he's not really willing to give his true opinions on people now with kagi on obviously preseason he absolutely hated spencer said spencer had zero chance of winning the game but obviously by the end of the season he loves Spencer, and Spencer's one of his favorite players at that point. Really, I do think he likes most of this cast. Again, I think Jatia is someone that he never seemed to like that much, but I think he can respect the amount of TV she brought. Morgan is someone he never seemed to like either, but I think I'm going to go with Lindsay here. Uh, she ends up quitting the game. Now, I do think he handles her quit better than you would expect, where he does seem to like rationalize her quit as like, oh, you're just trying to protect your daughter, which again makes no sense, but... I, I do think Lindsay's still the person he would pick out of this entire cast. For San Juan del Sur, I mean, there were a lot of people he didn't seem to particularly like on this cast, mainly because of how the season was cast, where, again, like, they mainly cast these duos for one person and then had the other person as a tag-along. So I think you had people like an Alec and a Wes who he never seemed to particularly like. I don't know how big of a John Rocker fan he was. Missing Baylor seemed to really annoy him while out there. But again, I think the answer here has to be Julie. Again, another person that quit the game. Didn't really add much to the show either. Like, I feel like there's almost no justification for him to end up supporting Julie here. So I am going to go Julie for 29. Now for Worlds Apart, I mean, there's a clear answer here. I, I, obviously, I think there's some annoyances with Will. Some annoyances with Max. But I mean, come on. The answer is Dan Foley. I'm to be honest, I think there's an argument for Dan Foley being his least favorite player of all time. Like, uh, I think for me, there is no other option. Obviously, you have what he does to Dan at the reunion show where he takes time out of a already very short reunion show to just call Dan out on his exit press statements. You have him on the season, Jeff being annoyed at certain comments he would make during tribals. Like for me, I mean, the clear answer here is Dan. Next up, we're moving on to Cambodia, where we have a few options here. I mean, Monica is someone that I don't think ended up bringing much to the table in his eyes. I know he was very disappointed by Wigglesworth. 
over the course of the season. But for me, I feel like there's a clear answer. And this is kind of an out-of-the-game reason, but still happened at the time of the filming of the season. And that person is Vetus. And obviously, if you don't know what happened with Vetus, Vetus ends up leaving Ponderosa early, breaking that rule. But then also decides to promote his yoga classes on social media during the filming of the season where again everyone knew that the season was being filmed because the cast was picked on live tv at the previous reunion so he essentially spoils that he is in early boot gets taken out of the reunion show i'm pretty sure he didn't get any money for being on the season like i'm sure jeff had to be really annoyed with that entire situation so for me he is the pick there and again from this point on like a lot of these newbie casts, like, I don't think there are good answers. Like, I don't think Jeff has, like, very solid negative opinions on a lot of players from this point on. Like, at this point, Jeff is so much involved in the casting process of the show that I think most of the people that get on the show are people that he really likes to begin with. So I do think it is very tough to really gauge a least favorite player from a lot of these casts. But let's start off with Korong, where I went between two people. First of all, I had Michelle, obviously someone who people credit her win with the changing of the formats coming in like Game Changers and Heroes versus Healers versus Hustlers and stuff like that. I don't think he actively dislikes Michelle, though. Again, I think he was disappointed at the way she played and how she won, but I don't think he actively dislikes her. So I ended up going with Alicia, who I do feel like he ends up disparaging a bit at tribals talking about how she is like the weakest member of the tribe like i do feel like there are more arguments pointed towards her of her being less favored by probes than there is with michelle so i did go with alicia from millennials versus gen x i don't think there's a good answer here like i really don't i think there are two people that i could see him being disappointed by on the season and that being cc and rachel if I remember correctly, I, I do believe he was very down on Rachel before the season started. So I decided to go with Rachel here. Again, there's not really a solid reason. There's not really a solid answer for Millennials or Gen X in my eyes. But I just feel like Rachel seems to be the person on the cast he is the least attached to. Now for Game Changers, where again, I feel like there's a solid answer for Game Changers here. I mean, we do have someone like an Aussie who we do know that Propes did fight to not get on the cast. But I mean, at the other day, I mean, the answer here has to be Varner. After the Zeke situation, I mean, Jeff pretty much single handedly kicks Varner off the show even before there's an official vote. Even though obviously Varner is going home anyway, it's like Jeff like kind of takes it on himself to get rid of Varner. I, I think the clear answer here is Varner. I don't think there's any other option. Now from HHH, and really. I think there's only one option here as well, not because this person's like a bad human being or anything. I think it's more so just, again, I think he likes most of the cast and there was one person he thought was a dud and that person's JP. Again, like we do know that he was annoyed at JP at Tribals because JP wouldn't answer his questions. I, I just think JP is the clear answer here. Now for Ghost Island, and this is a tough one because again, I think he likes most of this cast. I did consider three people here. I never felt like he was particularly high on Jenna, though there's not that much proof to really go for this, so I decided to not make her the pick. We obviously have someone like an Angela who didn't really ever really make a move on the season. I do feel like he could look at that as kind of underwhelming, but at the same time, I do think he liked Angela's story of her being this single mother. So I think the pick I'm going to go with here is Chelsea, mainly because of how under-edited she is, and Jeff does potentially have a role to play in that. I mean... We do know that Jeff is obviously involved in the editing process of the show. So the fact that she was so invisible in the edit kind of makes me think that, again, maybe he doesn't like her that much. And not that much actual proof here, but I felt like that was enough to make her the pick. Now for David versus Goliath, and there's a couple considerations. I did consider Alec, as Alec obviously, again, broke the rules. With him posting a picture of him and Kara after the filming of the season, before the airing. I feel like that annoyed Jeff, but at the end of the day, it's like, I feel like he also just genuinely likes Alec, though. So I didn't make him the pick. B is someone that, again, like, I'm sure he was kind of annoyed that she quit the game. But for me, the pick here is one that, again, like, this is for out-of-the-game reasons, but it was during the filming of the show, and that person is Jeremy. And Jeff seemed to like Jeremy in the preseason, even when he was out there. I think he was fine with Jeremy. However, Jeremy is another one of these people that decided to leave Ponderosa 
and go home early. Supposedly he was a pain to handle at Ponderosa. I'm sure Jeff got pretty annoyed at that. So because of that, I would say that Jeremy is the pick here because I, I think he likes B and Alec more than he did Jeremy. Next up, we have Edge of Extinction. And again, I don't think there's a great answer for Edge of Extinction. I did consider Eric just because, like, I mean, what did Eric really bring to the show? But uh, I decided to go with Julia. Again, kind of similar to a Chelsea situation where, like, Julia was just so under-edited on the season. While it didn't seem like he disliked Julia on the show itself, I, I just think based around how little edit she got and how Julia did call out Survivor Production for that after the show. I do feel like the pick here probably is Julia, but again, there isn't really a good option here. Now for Island of the Idols, and come on. Obviously, he likes most of his cast. I think this is probably one of his favorite casts in terms of the individual people because he mostly handpicked these people because during this season, he had almost sole control over the casting process. However, again, come on. The answer's obvious. And finally, we have Winners at War. And for me, there's an obvious pick. I, mean, I think there's one person that I never really saw him liking that much. And not that he dislikes this person, because again, like at the end of the day, like this is a group of 20 of the most popular Survivor players ever. And I think he likes everyone here, but I do think the person he likes the least is probably Nick. I never got the sense that he liked Nick during Dave vs. Goliath. He never really propped up Nick as a winner and more so talked about like Mike and Angelina during the finale interviews. Like I never got the sense that he liked Nick. And I do think through Nick's edit, Nick probably being one of the less prominent figures in the edit, I feel like Nick is probably the answer for Winners at War. And there we go. I mean, those are my predictions for Jeff Rope's least favorite player on every season of Survivor. Moving forward, I don't know what else I could really do with Jeff Probst's opinions on things. Like, I have a couple other ideas, but I don't know how great of video ideas those really are, and I don't know if I'll really be doing those moving forward. But either way, I'm obviously stay tuned for more just Survivor-based videos in the future. But for now, this video, thank you for watching.